and hello everyone welcome back to your Lua tutorial today we will be discussing tables in Lua tables represent things like arrays records sets list queues all of those things if you have heard about them then you know what they are if you have not heard about these things yet don't worry we'll be covering them today so the basic concept around a table is that a table is almost like a container for multiple variables so let's give you an example of maybe local x is equal to 10 and then you have local y is equal to 10 and then you have local z is equal to 10 and the variable names they don't matter to you really but you just need these values let's, let's make them different maybe like 15 and 20 but the, the, the names of the variables they don't really matter to you you just need these values to be stored and you have so many of them because sometimes you can have hundreds upon hundreds of variables in your program or maybe you just get data from outside your program and now you have to store it inside of variables and that's just going to be a lot of effort because there's a lot of variables that has to be created a way around this is creating a variable it can be called anything i'm going to call it r because i know tables the best as arrays or lists you will hear me a lot during this tutorial say arrays lists it, all of these things the real name is table but because of my previous programming knowledge I might say array or even list but you can go here and by doing this by putting these brackets here you have created your first table tables can contain values so 10 15 20 we did the same thing here let's just add a comma there here as what would have been if we did this local x y and z is equal to 10 15 and 20 but the difference is we did not declare more than one variable which means we still reserve these names for maybe a different variable we'd want to use and this is just setting all of the variables to their respective values the point i'm trying to make is that we put all of these values inside of that one variable instead of making multiple variables take note that you cannot print arrays so if we print array we save it we go here and we run the lua file you'll get this right here this is the value of this variable in your ram so this is their location so to get a value inside of an array you use these square brackets and you say what index so index would be index 1 index 2 index 3 so each one of these is an index if we want to get 10 that would be index 1 save it run it and we get 10 if we want to get 15 that would be index 2 run it whoops run it and we get 15 index 3 that would be 20 run it and we get 20 index 4 would be nil because there's no value there so you don't have to worry about going overboard because you will get nil if there's nothing there an array can keep anything so you might also know if we put our local x y and z here though with these variables you can keep things like 10 true and let's say hello you can keep all of these inside of variables so x would be 10 y would be true z would be hello you can do the same inside of an array so here we can maybe make it true and here we can maybe make this hello world and here we can probably go like 2.4 and you can put any data type value in here because an array is just another variable that contains multiple values Take note that now this 4 will work because 1, 2, 3, 4, index 4 is covered by 2.4. Run it, we'll get 2.4. If we do 3, then we will get hello world. Take note that you are not limited to a specific length as far as I know when it comes to tables. You can put as many things in there as you need. To get the length of an array, because sometimes you need to know what the length is, you can go here 
to the front and just put a hashtag there. Just like with a string, this will give you the length of an array. So if we refresh and go here, we get four. This is nice because if you want to get the last element in an array, so the one right here, so two point four, and you didn't know what that is, you can go R and put this inside of square brackets because this returns four. So array at index four is one, two, three, four. Go here, run it, and you get 2.4. Because it's right there, 2.4. Let's create an array here with random values. And it's just random values. If we were to list them out, we just get the random values. It's 10, 15, 23, whatnot. But we can sort these values. So what we can do is we can say table sort and this will sort these values for us and then we can just pass in the table because here it actually tells you what it needs but we can pass in the table in this case r and that is all it needs you can pass in a function to tell it how to sort it but it isn't required now if you print out r at index 1 you will be receiving 0 because 0 is the smallest value in this array do that and we get 0 if we were to print out two then here that would be one because one is the second smallest value so it would be at index two and we just save that and run it we get one we can loop through an array as well so we can use a for loop so for i becomes one to the length of the array and then we can just print the array at index i the reason this works is because i is a value, it's a number. So if we put one in here, it would be the same thing, but i just changes with every loop. So we do that, we get all of the values in the array in their order. However, if we were to sort this array, then now we would get the array in its sorted order. So this is a nice way to visualize what's in your array as well. So let's take a four through an array. You can also insert data into an array, so we can just remove that and just run it to see the original value right there. To insert a value into an array, it is rather simple. We can just say table.insert, and here we can specify the array or the table we want to insert things into. The index or the position we want to insert something in. So let's say you want to make 15 move upwards and put something there. So at index 2. And then we can say what we want. So let's say, let's, let's put a, a string value there. Put that there. Now if we run this, we get 10 lol 15 instead of 10 15. So we have inserted the value into the array. We can also remove a value from it. So remove. And we can specify what uh, list we want to put here and in what index we want to delete. So let's say we want to remove 50 because maybe that's a little bit too big. One, two, three, four, and there we go. 50 is at index four. Save that. And if we were to run this, we no longer have 50 in our array. We can also concatenate an array. So I'm going to put a few strings here. So I'm going to say, hello, world I am Steve. I'm really gonna put these two together. Then we can just delete that and we can actually just remove that as well. And here we can just say print table dot concat and here we put the table we want to concatenate so R and then how we want to concatenate it, so spaces. Basically what this means is, okay, take every index here and put them into a string separated by spaces. So in this case, if we were to save and run this, we'll get hello world, I am Steve, separated by spaces. We can change this to something else. If I wanted to put commas here, I could run that and now we have commas. If we wanted to put a bunch of exclamation marks here for whatever reason, we can. So yeah, that's how you can concatenate tables. You can also have a multi-dimensional table. 
If you're new to programming, you don't have to worry too much about multi-dimensional things just yet, until you really need to use them. But to take note, a multi-dimensional table would be a table inside of another table. So in this case, if we were to add in our table here, we could go one, two, three, and here we can say uh, seven, eight, zero, and here we can say whoops let me just fix that 9 99 and 989 or something like that so this is an array within an array so right so this right here has a bunch of tables inside of it as well so this one table has three tables inside of it so currently if we say array then we get its location in the RAM. If we say array at index 1, we'll get the table inside of array at index 1's location in the RAM. So we'll get this table's location because we cannot print out the table. Put a 1 here and now we will get this one right here. So we're accessing this table, so this one right there. Then we're accessing the first table, so this table right here, inside of this table. And then we're accessing the first value inside of the first table inside of the table. So right there. Bit confusing. Okay, then let's make this two. We'll get six because now we're saying, okay, go to this array, go to index two and give me one. Okay, we get six. If we were to make this three, then we will get nine because now it's at nine. If we were to make this, let's say, 2, so then it's going to say, okay, go here, go to index 3, which is this one right here, and go to index 2, that's this one right here. Do that, we get 99. So that's a multi-dimensional list. We can also loop through a multi-dimensional list, or array, or table, by going 4, and we're going to say i is equal to 1 to the length of the array. And currently, we can't really do much, so if we print out what is at array, at index i, then we'll just get a bunch of locations, because currently, we're just getting a bunch of tables back. So we need to create another for loop, inside of this for loop. So we'll make this one j at index 1, all the way to the length of the array at index i. I'll explain that in a second. We can move this upwards here paste it and we can make this j run it and now we can loop through the entire array so it's 123 123 680 680 and 999 989 we can add more values it doesn't have to stick with that specific amount i was just giving an example run it again it still works perfectly fine but what i wanted to say is we here say loop through this array right so that's what's going on here then we're saying okay for every array inside of this array loop through it so that is what's happening here so we're saying if i were to give you a little bit more of, of a visual example so i is equal to one right and j is equal to one when we set it so then we say okay print array so r at index i, which is 1, so I'm going to make that 1, so we can visualize it, and j at 1. So I'm just going to maybe say a 1j and 1i, just so we know which is which, right? And then we say, and then this right here, 1, 1, that would be this one right there. Then we say, okay, now loop through this one. So it's going to do this loop first, and it's going to say, okay, then j is going to become 2, that means we're going to get 2, and then j is going to become 3, we're going to get 3, j is going to become 4, we get 8, j is going to become 5, and we get 0. And then that is the end of that list, so that's the end of this one's length. So then j will become 1 again, but i will increase to 2. So it's going to give us 6, and then j is going to loop again, that's going to become 2, that gives us 8, and then j is going to become 3, that will give us 0, and then we reach the end of j again, j becomes 1, and i becomes free and this just continues until it reaches the very end of the entire table wow that was a lot to cover 
So that was the basics of tables. We'll be covering them a bit more in the future while we work on different things. And yeah. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and did understand and follow along. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try my best to answer them. If you liked the video, feel free to also like and subscribe and I will see you all again in your next Lua tutorial.